Viewers of Cobra Kai have quickly become fans of Stingray, an adult karate fanboy who joins the Cobra Kai dojo in hopes of reliving his lost teenage years. Metallica! Noise! Who is this Metallica-loving odd man out in a dojo full of teenagers? Just one word, Stingray. In this video, we will delve deeper into this mysterious 80s aficionado and look at his purpose in Cobra Kai. Let's uncover what nobody realized about the man we know as Stingray. Before he was Stingray, he was good old Raymond. We first meet Ray when Johnny visits the hardware store looking to purchase a mirror after his reunion with Kreese resulted in more than seven years of bad luck. Ray joins the Cobra Kai and his confidence grows as a member of the dojo and Cobra Kai family. He begins on a journey of transformation, similar to when Eli flipped the script to become Hawk, so does Ray flip the script to become Stingray. Just as Hawk's name carries significance with his traits and hairstyle, so does Stingray's name carry meaning. His newfound name carries his birth name, Ray, as well as serves to foreshadow his eventual betrayal and sting of his relationship with Johnny. Stingray tells Miguel, you know, the thing about Stingrays is, they lie in wait for the perfect opportunity to strike. Stingray exhibits the same characteristics of his aquatic counterpart during the Red and Black Challenge at Coyote Creek, as he lies camouflaged beneath leaves and dirt ready to pounce on Miguel and win the challenge. From this point forward, Ray is no longer. The script has been flipped. The 80s were the best era ever. The best era ever. Stingray expresses his love for everything 80s, including the All-Valley Tournament fight between Daniel and Johnny, and in doing so, he mirrors our love for all of these great 80s moments. In his first meeting with Johnny, Stingray is helping Johnny purchase a mirror. Just like the mirror, we see our reflection in Stingray. He is us, and we are him. Similar to Stingray, we may have been told as kids that karate was too violent for us to join. Who wouldn't want to learn karate as a child after watching Daniel Crane kick his way into a championship win? Stingray surely did, and now he is finally getting his opportunity. He begins by reliving his lost teen years by attending his teammate's teenage kegger party. In one of the funniest moments of Cobra Kai, we feel the pain when Stingray struggles to use his double 40 alcohol bottle duct tape hands to escape from police, who are raiding the party for underage drinking. In this moment, Stingray most likely doesn't even realize that he isn't underage. He has simply become one of the teens. He is one of their peers. Even his girlfriend questions him about the age of his friends as they arrive at Moon's kegger party together. Oh yeah, these aren't my friends. Their parents are out of town. She was expecting them to be much older. In a way, we can all relate to Stingray. We have all wanted to relive our childhood at some point in our lives, and when he does win the Red and Black Challenge, we see ourselves succeed through Stingray. He shows that it is possible for even a couch potato to become a winner. We are happy to see Stingray grow his karate skills throughout the season. His passion for karate makes us smile after witnessing his reaction to the Cobra Kai demonstration at All Valley Fest. From their very first encounter, it is evident that Sensei Johnny is annoyed with Stingray and his enthusiasm. Johnny only lets Stingray join the dojo after he offers him a wad of cash. Throughout the season, Johnny constantly berates him and even nicknames him Chups. As we've learned, Stingray has never been part of a real family. This changes as he begins to receive the admiration of Kreese. This is where we begin to track the start of the fall of Stingray. Kreese uses his manipulation tactics to win Stingray into his corner by praising him for his win and calling him Stingray for the first time. Kreese sees the potential to mold him into his very own foot soldier. We end the season with Stingray interviewing for a position as security at West Valley High School, where the Miyagi-Do and Cobra Kai students attend. My question for you is, what is the teacher's lounge situation looking like? When the brawl between the two warring dojos breaks out in the school, we see Stingray spring into action as school security and he begins to fight off the Miyagi-Do students. He even high-fives Hawk in the process. Is Stingray looking for a job at the high school to be closer to his karate teammates and friends? Or is there a more sinister reason for him interviewing for a position there? Does Stingray receive marching orders from Kreese to become entrenched in a position of authority at the school? Is the goal to protect the Cobra Kai students and give them free reign from Miyagi-Do? The final sting to Johnny and right through our hearts occurs when Johnny enters the dojo to see Kreese taking control of Cobra Kai with a rogue band of students, which includes Stingray. It appears that he has finally received the admiration and respect he always wanted through Kreese, and he is now karate champion with a mission. He is Kreese's second in command. From the moment we met Stingray, he has provided comic relief in a rather dark season of Cobra Kai. Once Raymond flipped the script and transformed into Stingray, we see how his servitude to Kreese may have ultimately led to his undoing in Season 3. Where do you see Stingray's character headed in the future? Will he ever win an All-Valley Tournament? And how did he escape the fuzz with those two 40s duct taped to his hands? Smash that subscribe button and flip those notifications on for more Cobra Kai content headed your way.
Thanks for watching.